Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my weekly Twitch stream. I'm Nick O'Leary, project lead for Node-RED, uh, here with another hour or so of some uh, Node-RED code development. I say hour or so. Last couple of weeks, it's run for a couple of hours. Don't plan to go too long tonight. Um, lots going on, but what have we got going on? Um, well, I should say, if it's your first time here, do say hi in the chat. If it's not, say hi in the chat anyway. Uh, if you're watching YouTube, replay, please do like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. I uh, already see Soft2K, Mbanani, Jim Bob Squelchy, all the regulars. Great to see you guys. Um, welcome back. Uh, thank you for sticking with me as I just plug my way through getting the 1.3 release closer to being ready to ship. So let's just check in on where we are with 1.3. Um, so we've got, uh, yeah, so the 1.3 beta went out, was it now two and a half weeks ago, maybe? Um, and just looking at the stats, I think we did this last week, looking at the weekly downloads for the beta, um, we've had another 50 installs over the last week, which is okay. Um, again, we want to try and make sure we have make sure we have enough um uh have enough testing going on in the community of uh the beta before we do the final publish and there's also a few more bits and pieces we want to tidy up in time for doing the beta so that's what i'm going to look at tonight um there's a piece around plugins that uh, we want to have a look at so um, well, not only plugins, but something that nodes would benefit from that that um, we can uh, make life easier for them. So uh, let me just pull a few things up on my screen before I start sharing. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. So with the plugin framework, which works very similar to the way nodes exist. They're packages, NPM modules. They have a package.json file with some extra metadata in that declares what's in the package in a way that Node-RED understands. And in the case of a node, you have a JavaScript file that gets loaded into the runtime and an HTML file that gets loaded into the editor. For a plugin, you can have either or both <laughs> files. So you don't. So a node must have a JavaScript and an HTML file. A plugin can have just a JavaScript file if it's just a runtime plugin. It can have just an HTML file if it's just an editor plugin, or it can have one of each if it's got something to contribute to both the editor and the runtime. Um, but um, perhaps unlike a node, the node's contribution to the editor is typically it's going to be its edit dialog. And on the whole, the edit dialogs don't get overly complicated, or you know, perhaps they they shouldn't get overly complicated. But on some occasions, nodes want to be able to do a bit more, want to be able to load more code than makes sense to squeeze into the one HTML file. So in those cases, those nodes have had to follow a, a slightly hacky pattern for how those nodes can then load additional resources into um, uh, into the editor. So I'm just going to show you um, probably one of the first examples from the community of doing this. Let's find the right screen. Yeah, there we are. Um, and this is Ben's Geofence node. So this is probably probably one of the very first nodes that um, had to tackle this problem. So if you've not played with it, the Geofence node in its edit dialog, which is you can sort of see a excerpt of here, it shows you a map to help you define a region on the map that um, basically geo geofencing regions. So you pass in a message with a lat latitude and longitude and the node tests, is it within that region or not? But in order to display this map, 
um, Ben loads up the leaflet um, JavaScript library, and which comes with all the images and yeah, all the other requirements. And obviously, he doesn't build all of that into the HTML. He has to load it dynamically. So if we just start looking at the HTML, you can see in here the HTML that gets added in to the editor whenever you open up a Geofence Nodes edit dialog includes some links to some custom style sheets. And um, if you can see, let's make this big, big, big. Um, yeah, so you can see uh, Geofence, the path, Geofence slash JS, leaflet, leaflet CSS, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, so that loads up the CSS, and I bet in here somewhere he will also have the JavaScript, which probably does it. I bet he loads it dynamically somewhere. No. Yeah, maybe that's all the code doing. Oh yeah, here. So he does a lot of code to um, dynamically load those scripts and append them to the page. Now there were, I forget, historic reasons why we do it that way rather than um, rather than the script tags like he does the CSS. But for the life of me, I can't remember it. That's not important for what we're looking at tonight. Um, and so, so it's loading a bunch of custom resources. So if we look at his node's JavaScript side, um, here you can see it's top level function, which gets called. Here's the node itself. We're going to skip past the node itself. And you can see here, Ben adds in a custom root handler for anything starting slash geofence slash JS. Um, it to serve up, uh, yeah, uses Express's own send file function. Um, so if it requires anything on slash gfs.js, it will hit this root handler and um, serve up files from his static directory. So if we go look, and sure enough, here we can see his node has this static directory, and this is where all of those resources live. Now, it's not really ideal to have, I mean, th this is a lot of boilerplate code. Um, you yeah, know, that's, that's a lot of code that uh, for any node that wants to share additional resources, effectively just have to copy and paste and just swap out geofence and make sure they pick a sensible um, URL that isn't, likely to cause clashes. Um, so that's the case for nodes and plugins are just the same. And like I said, plugins are probably more likely to want to load additional libraries for um, doing more custom things in the UI um, and custom images and, and all sorts of other resources. So what I've put together today is um, where is it? So here I am in the Node-RED source code. In the test directory, there's resources, plugin, test plugin. So this is just a, a test plugin you can load into the editor to test the various aspects of plugins that, that I've been working on. And if we look at the package.json, you can see, if I make this big so you can see, um, as it's a plugin, uh, the, the Node-RED section of package.json has a plugins subsection. But what I've been playing with today is, well, let's add in this new resources subsection. And the current concept, which I'm still kicking around, uh, is this resources, it's an array rather than an object of key value pairs. And it's meant intended to be an array of directories relative to the root path of the plugin that contain static resources that should be exposed on the admin API. So if we look, so under resources, I imaginatively, you can see I've got this 
directory here called resources, which has, well, it's got an empty directory, which is part of my testing, <laughs> and I've got a script.js, and all, and that contains some JavaScript that's just a, a self-executing um, function that will just console.log loaded script.js, just so that we'll be able to see for sure if that script has been loaded. And I've also updated test.html, which is one of the example plugins. And you can see it loads in the JavaScript um, using a standard script tag. Now, uh, yeah, and that works. Um, so if, if I, you can see here's the URL let me switch back. So you can see I'm, I'll explain a bit more about how we construct this URL, but it's resources test plugin script.js. So, and sure enough, here you can see localhost 1880 slash resources slash test plugin slash script.js. And there is my, um, uh, there is the job, yeah, well, there, there is that JavaScript, which is nice. Um, and um, um, yeah, so how's this working under the covers? Well, I mean, the, the main point here is the node or the plugin in this is, hasn't had to register any admin endpoints in order to be able to serve up the resources. What I've added, and this is kind of sort of a walking tour through the structure of our source code. Um, Editor API is the set of HTTP admin routes to serve up the editor. And in that, I've added this new root handler. I'm going to have to make it look smaller so you can see. Um, now, it... <laughs> It does use a slightly incomprehensible regular expression, but this effectively breaks down into um, any URL on the admin API that looks like resources slash, then you get um, that, which is module identifier. And it, it it's, looks complicated because you have to remember npm modules um, could be just the word, just a simple word, but they can also have a scope. So it could be foo with a path separator. So yeah, the regular expression gets a little hairy, but um, it yeah, it's that, it's that, it's that, and then whatever's left over, path to resource. So yeah, any URL that matches this. So that's the key thing that plugins and nodes will need to know is um, given, obviously they, they know their own module name. So in their .html file, to load extra resources, they have to prepend the path to that resource with this text, you know, this, this prefix to, to the URL, res slash resources slash the identifier slash so on and so forth. Um, so that means nodes no longer get a, would not get a choice as to what URL, what path their resources are exposed on. It means you can't have one module um, uh, claiming a path that clashes with another module because they're all scoped to um, the module's own identifier, which seems to make sense to me. Yeah, it's, it's a fair compromise. Um, so yeah, um, and oh, well, let's step it through. So whenever the admin app gets a request that matches that absurd regular expression, it calls through to the ui.module resource handler, which let's jump to that. So here's module resource. Um, we pull out that's a bit of a weird mix. Let's just tidy this up. Uh, we pull out from the regular expression the path to the resource. 
we build up our options object for the admin API. So the user making the request, the module, again, pulling out the first group from the match regular expression and the path to the resource we want to load. And then it calls the a new function on the runtime API, on the nodes part of the runtime API to get that resource. Now, one of the things we've done with splitting out the editor components from the runtime components is we try to make sure that the runtime side doesn't deal with the express root handler directly. So it does mean there's a little bit of inefficiency here, but you know these routes are not meant to be high. Yeah, these aren't high performance routes, to be frank. You know they, these are not meant. These aren't. Um, uh, yeah, these are not high workload routes. They're just loading static resources into the editor. Um, so. Yeah, what what this call to the runtime API does is if I jump down into the runtime module lib API nodes, get module resource, it in turn calls into the internal runtime to get a module resource, and we pass in the module and the path. And what that returns is the bearing in mind this code is in the run logically in the runtime section. It's on the runtime side of the runtime API, I should say. Um, if get module resource has returned something, which is to say it's returned a full, fully qualified path to the file that has been requested, this code then reads the file and, um, and returns it. As a buffer, because we don't know if it's text or we don't care what its contents is. We just read the file off disk and then pass it back over the admin API, back up to the um, uh, back up to the resource handler. So the response is data, which is this is the data to return. We sniff the path to get its mime type, so we can set the content type correctly. So if it's .js, if it's .dot PNG, .css, whatever it might be, at least we'll try and set the content type correctly so the browser doesn't barf. Um, and then we send the data. But if there's no data, we 404 it. If something goes horribly wrong, we'll, we log it and return the error as per normal. Um, so yeah, it is slightly odd that we load the file sort of quite deeply load the file contents quite deeply in the runtime and then pass it back over the admin API, the runtime API. But we kind of have to take this approach because for the model where the runtime and the editor have been separated and maybe running, not running co-located, um, the node runtime has been installed in the runtime. So we need to be able to pull those resources but from the runtime back up into the editor routes for the editor to be for them to be served up to the editor it's it's still a bit theoretical how that works uh, or the what true value there is in having split these the editor and the runtime apart but whilst we have that separation this this is kind of the consequences of it and, and how we deal with it um yeah um but then delving all the way in um the uh, delving all the way in, he says, and then where is it? The the kind of the interesting part. Well, it's, that probably oversells it. Um, we're now deep in the registry, which is the code that deals with loading modules from disk, seeing what's in them, and setting and building its internal registry of, of what's available. Um, this is the code that does the work. Um, let's see. No. No, my friend. There must be more to it than that. Oh no, I was in the right place. So, when we load a package.json file, which is what PKG is in this code, 
Um, you can see here, we this is where we examine the node red section. I'll just show you that again. Package.json. Yeah, this is us looking at, at the node red section, looking for plugins, resources, and nodes. Um, yeah, nodes, plugins, and resources. So that's where we load the information from the module. Um, and yeah, do stuff with it. <laughs> and then I think I'm in the right place. Yeah. So get module resource. So this is what gets called when by the admin API when we want to get an actual resource from a module. Uh, we check to see whether the module in question actually has any resources. Um, we then, because it's an array of multiple directories at the moment, we can iterate over them or just loop over them. We build up the path from um, the using the base path of the module itself. So what directory is its package JSON is in, joined with the resource name, as in um, here you can see dot slash resources. And then so that gives us the base path we need to look in. We then calculate the full path, which is the base path we've just calculated, joined with the resource path, and you know, the path to the file that's being requested. We then do this check, and this is a very important check. Um, we calculate the relative path to get from the base path to that full path. And then we look at it and we say, does it begin with dot dot? <laughs> because if it begins with dot dot, it means in order to get to from the base path to the full path of the file we're being asked to serve, we're having to go up the directory tree, basically we're breaking out of the module's own directory and we must not allow that. You know, we, we must only serve up files from inside the plugin. So that's an important security test. And we, we have to do that check in quite a few places in the code base where we load up files based on user requests. Um, we then check to see, well, does this file exist? Because if the, if the module, if the plugin has got multiple resource directories, then, um, uh, basically, we, we have to check each one or check them until we find the file. And if we ne never find, so if we find the file, we can then return the full path. So the fully qualified path to get to that file. Otherwise we return null. And because we return the fully qualified path, that's where we can then try loading it and loading the data as I showed you just now. And then one final piece of that um, which was in, uh, so Jim, but what about dot slash dot dot? Well, that, that's the nice thing with, um, let me go back, hold on, let me, I'll just show you this and I'll come back to that question. Um, so here's where we would have passed back that full path. We try to read, read it. One of the possible error cases is the, um, path we've been given is actually a directory, not an actual file. Now I could have tested for that earlier, but it's actually in some ways uh, quicker to let this read file fail and see that it's a error is directory because you can't read file on a directory. And if that's the case, then we just return null normally. Otherwise only then pass the error back because yeah, for some reason permission denied. Um, but yeah, so to your question, Jim Bob, about what about dot slash dot dot, this is the nice thing with the um, this path dot relative function of the the built-in path module of Node.js is that it it normalizes everything. Um, it normalizes all the paths, so um, it it will never return dot slash dot dot if in order to get from base path to full path it involves going up a directory it will always begin with dot dot slash 
that's just a given for what this function returns. So um, yeah, so that means we can rely we can rely on that behavior. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, so this is what I knocked up in an hour earlier today, and it's it is working. Uh, let me, um, as you can see, that URL loads up my script.js. Um, if I reload the editor, you can see lots of loaded messages going on down here, but most importantly, loaded script.js. So you know, that has successfully been loaded in, which is nice. Um, but yeah, that does potentially mean that nodes can get away with not having um, to do lots of well, lots of boilerplate code to load up these additional resources. It means nodes will now be able to have um, images. For example, if their help text needs to have images, then um, they could be served up. So why don't we... Uh, have I got an example of that? I can... I mean, I've, I've said that, so it would be nice to prove that. <laughs> um, do I have... Slightly tricky thing is the core nodes all get loaded very subtly differently. They don't have a package.json file in order to load resources from. So um, they are a bad example for me to try and demonstrate this on. Um, node red node UI webcam. Have I got actually got that installed at the moment? Yes, I have. Okay. So let's no, oh, but it's a dashboard node and I haven't got a dashboard set up at the moment, so that's just gonna have lots of errors in it. Um let's go. Just scanning through all of these to look for, I must have somewhere. No. Um, my passion, Jason. Oh, there we go. Annotate image. So you can see my picture JSON file, I hope. I load node with node annotate image from my workspace rather than proper npm install. So let's let's go have a look at annotate image, which is here. Okay, so here's its package.json. We're going to add in resources and oh, it's not an object, it's a, an array. And we're going to say, well, let's call it images for want of a um, want of a better thing. So let's create a directory called images. Um, and then let me uh, let me just think about images. Um, node red, where is it? Node red nodes. Utility annotate image images. Let me just go quickly go find an image to drop in there. Um, Uh, images. Right, so gone and grabbed an image. Let's go find its HTML. So here's its HTML. And I'm going to very antisocially stick in an image right at the top. And we if you remember it's resources slash annotate. No, it's uh, node red node. 
was it node with node annotate image and I cop just copied in the node red hexagon image okay yeah let's see what that does uh, we just need to restart node red to reload the module there we are all good let's reload the editor and if we go find the help for annotate image we have an image in the help cool and because it's yeah 100 percent width so it uh yeah a bit in your face but that's quite cool now that the fact you know a side effect of this work is we can now have images in the help um that's even aside from making it easier to load in custom JavaScript libraries and for the edit dialogues, just being able to do images in the help will certainly help. Haha, <laughs> pardon the pun. Uh, yeah, will certainly benefit um, some nodes. And I think we we have been asked about being able to do that in the past. So, cool. I'm going to undo those changes, however, because we don't really want, there's no reason for anti image to have. Um, a folder of images. But that proves the concept, which is nice. So the, i just close all that down. Um, so the bit that I'm, yeah, I've, I've got to the stage with this feature after a couple of, you know, an hour, hour and a half's work on it. Um, uh, proved the idea works and I've you know proved that there's something useful and I've got the basic shape of how that's going to work the question is now okay what what have I missed what's is it suitable now the main thing I always think about, I'm, I'm not so worried about the internal code because code can be changed fixed um, you know I'm pretty confident with the code we've got what is harder to change is um, anything we add to the package.json in terms of what does a user have to do because once nodes start publishing with this extra property that's something we are stuck with and it's something you know we know we need um, uh, you know, that we just can't modify so um, Let's see. Um, so there's, yeah, a few thoughts here. One is, okay, I've, I've started off doing it as an array. And, and to be honest, it started off as an object because that's what nodes and plugins look like. But then I couldn't really decide what, why, why would you want it to be an object? What's the key? What's the value? If all you're doing is identifying one or more directories that should be served up automatically, then an array would be sufficient. Um, uh, which is perfectly valid. There is a thought of, well, does it even need to be an array? Because um, if you've only got one directory of them, then syntactically, do it, does it strictly need to be an array? One of the things, and then something else has occurred is um, in the case of icons, node icons, they get loaded by sheer virtue of having an icons directory. Um, so I don't know if you can see me waving on, on the smaller sidebar here. For example, the RBE node provides its own <laughs> it doesn't show up at all. Uh, there it is. Um, the RBE node shows up, has its own custom icon, and nodes can have icons by having an icons directory, just as they can have a locales directory if for their message catalogs. 
Those are kind of just fixed standards. So there is a thought about, well, if this is just intended to be a list of resources that should be served up automatically, why... And if nine times out of ten, that's just going to be pointing to a directory that contains stuff to be served up, why force the user to declare them and to provide that list when it's likely to be a list of one and that's not a pattern we enforce. In fact, we have a very different pattern for message catalogs and icons. So a different approach would be to rather than have the user declare anything, use convention like we do with icons and locales to say, well, if there is a directory called resources inside your plugin or your node module, we will automatically serve that directory up. So put whatever you want in it, but we will serve that up and expose it um, automatically. And there's there is kind of a um, there's a neatness about that, I guess. Um, yeah, it's trying to get this balance between the free form of the plugin and the node author gets to choose what that directory is called, or do we just say, no, if you want it served up, it has to be in a directory called resources, and it's up to you how they get there. And that, because that's another interesting point that um, a colleague at, at IBM has been playing around with Open API. No, not Open API, Async API. And he's made quite, well, he's, he's done a very nice little proof of concept of a Node-RED plugin that gives a custom sidebar. In fact, let me see if I can, let me see if I can find it and show you it. Um, duh, duh, duh. Here he is. Okay, well, I'll say, well, you can't hear what Dale's saying, but he does a lot of work with Kafka. Um, so here's a Kafka node, and you, know, you go in and have to configure all the broker details and the topic detail and all that sort of stuff. Async API is a standard spec for things to declare in a standard format um, uh, their endpoints. So async API, it's in YAML, but it, you can see thing it's got a server section which pre, which defines a a server to use, and then the different channels and what you can do with them and metadata about them and all that good stuff. It's all it is the async messaging equivalent to open API for HTTP. So he's created this plugin which gives a, a sidebar that you give it a URL to the YAML it can automatically pick out the data, it automatically picks out the servers and the topics, and you can pick from the list of them. And then when you hit generate, it sticks in um, a pre-configured node for that API, which is really neat. But um, in order to do the parsing of the async API, Dell's using a standard NPM module that does ASIC, knows how to do async API. And at the moment he has to, he's effectively had to copy and paste that JavaScript into his no, into his plugins um, JavaScript. So he was asking, I mean, everything I've been talking about tonight was on the to-do list anyway, but I think his, he asked the question at the right time of how could he better, um, how could he better include this npm provided javascript without having to copy and paste it into his code now that still proves to be a little tricky here because if you think about everything i've just talked about whether it's declaratively having an entry in here resources blah whatever or just having a resources directory when you npm install a module its dependencies might end up in a node modules directory within your module. 
but npm will also try and install things at the highest level possible so it might install that library up a level not down a level so you could not reliably declare um sorry let me let me complete a thought <laughs> to show you what i was thinking so if this was if this was an array you could say, ah, well, I know I need, and I forget what the module's called, but I know when I npm install it in certain conditions, um, it will end up in something like, uh, well, in fact, you'd be the directory. So I know when I npm the module, npm install the module, my dependency, whatever it's called, don't. I've made that up. It's I can't remember what it's actually called, and it's not even API. It's async API. I keep getting those modeled up. Um, yeah, I I know it, I need to pull out, be able to serve up the JavaScript from under this directory. But the problem is, I you can't guarantee that it will be dot slash node modules. It could be node modules upper level, and as soon as you're getting into being upper level, then that breaks our rules about exposing files that are outside of the root of the plugin. Um, so there's still an interesting question about how could he publish a node that wants to be able to serve up content from um, an NPM module. Now, the best I've kind of got to on thinking that through is having, um, having an NPM, let me think, NPM, post install, is it post install script? So what you can do is, um, let's find it, post install. So the post install script, and there must be proper documentation for it. No, oh, npm's documentation can sometimes be hit and miss, maybe. Oh, well, maybe it says enough about it. But the point being, you can define a script that should run after your module's been installed. So you could write some JavaScript that after your node's been installed, goes and finds your dependency in its library and then copies the files into your own plugins resources directory. Um, now, yeah, I mean, yeah, that that would be one. Is it that hacky? I don't know, but it it would certainly solve that problem. Um, yeah, I, and I suspect that probably bridges the gap between the convenience of of being able to serve stuff up automatically and then have that stuff be supplied from third party modules rather than stuff you supply yourself. Um, yeah, and and again, it's one of those things. It's easier to refine the stuff and make it easier in the future, as long as we don't um, commit to a a solution that can't be bent to um, other needs. So, what I'm inclined to do, and what I'll spend the next few minutes doing, is okay. At the moment, we've got the code that looks for this resources. Um, looks for this resources property of the package.json. I think I've sort of, as I've, as often happens on this live stream, I think I've talked myself around to this idea of, actually, no, we should say, fix it to be a directory called resources at the root of your plugin. And if that exists, they will be exposed um, without you having to do anything in your package.json. So let's, let's try that. So you can see I've removed the resources entry from my test plugin. If I just cause Node-RED to reload in the background. So here's that URL. You can see it successfully loaded that script. If I refresh it now, we get a nice 404 because we've removed resources from the package.json. It doesn't know how to resolve it anymore. So that's, well, that's good because it's working as intended at the moment. But now we've changed our minds as how we want this to work. So let's go into local file system in the registry. So this is what deals with finding stuff. And if you recall, 
this was the code that dealt with um, pulling out the resources from the package.json if it was set, otherwise doing an empty directory. What we're going to do is, let me just look through, look through, look through. Um, yeah. In fact, you can see down here, we do exactly the logic we want looking for the examples directory. So we look for a directory called examples in the module directory. If it exists, we record it, otherwise we forget about it. <clears throat> so um, what we're going to do is remove resources from that from there. And we're just going to copy and paste examples dir and just do exactly the same logic, but do it for resources. And for consist somewhat, in, I mean, it's, this is very much internal detail, so we can change it. But we're setting the resources to be an object with a path and a, a path key, and the value being that resource directory. Is that pointless? I think we do that because it's somewhat consistent with the icon list, but. Um, I, you know, I'm just going to go with that for the moment. Um, now, if we go look at where else we, so here you can see. So when I'm now looking for where do we handle examples, and you can see examples gets passed straight through there, and we were already passing resources straight through, so that's fine. Just make sure. Yeah, that's all of them. That's good. Um, then we come into the registry and get module resource. Okay. Um, so at the moment, we check to see does this module have resources and then we loop over them. Well, there is no more looping over because there's only going to be one resource directory. Um, so we, in fact, we can get rid of A fair whack of this. Um, so base path is going to be um, the path of the, um, right. Let's there's a good point. Because I bet at the moment, if I try it for a non existent, yeah. So rather than getting a 404, we can't, if I do it for a, a module that we don't know about, we get a different error. We don't get a 404, and that's because it was assuming it existed. So now we go and retrieve the module, we check it exists. And we want to check whether it has resources or a resources directory. That's all good. So the base path is going to be the mod's own path joined with the mod resources dot path because if you recall, we're setting resources to this object with a path property. So that's the base path. That's the, so all this logic now is identical. Um, yeah, that's all goodness. Um, yeah, that should now work. Um, let's try it. So now if we reload test plugin script, it still doesn't work. Okay, so it's not worked. What's going on? Why is that not worked? Let's put some 
debugging so we can see. So, oops. Make that smaller in that way, but bigger in that way. Yeah, I hope you can just about see that. Let's refresh this page. Okay, so we've got, uh, it's found the path. Ah, now that's interesting. So look how the path property is the fully qualified. Yeah, okay. Um, whereas before we were passing through whatever the user provided in their package.json for the directory name. So it would have been just the word resources with this new scheme the path is already a fully qualified path to, um, yeah, so the resource path is already fully qualified. So this, um, so what does that mean? So it means our, so yeah, base path is mod.resources.path. We don't need to do any of the joining. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see what happens. Let me just get rid of that one. Uh, let's see what happens. This should now work, I think. Yes! So it's loaded script.js. And let's just try if I put in a non existent one in there. Okay, well, that gets an error. Um, can't read re property. Oh, that's because I'm console.locking it. So if I get rid of that console.log and refresh, there, 404, which is what we expect. That's the right error to be returning. But plug into script, that works. Cool. Cool, cool. All right. So I think we're just about there. So now whether plugin or node, you can just have a resources directory and we'll automatically serve up anything in there. Um, yeah, we'll solve it in there. Okay. Just got distracted. Someone's just raised an issue. So uh, if it were slightly earlier in the hour, we could delve into that. But you know what? I think I'm pretty good here. I think I've pretty much covered what I wanted to cover. I'm pleased with this plugin enhancement. I think this will um, fill a gap we had with with plugins. Um, whether it fills it enough, I don't know. We might need to iterate again, but from a basic piece of functionality, it's now much easier for nodes and plugins to serve up extra content without them having to worry about setting up the routes themselves. Um, yeah, so that's good. That is good. I kind of feel we ought to have some tests for this, but that's uh, perhaps a little bit more involved than I want to get into five minutes before I plan to finish. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, at the very least, what I'm going to do is, 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 somewhere in here, I've got my designs repo, designs, plugins, what branch am I in? Yes, the plugins branch. So, so this is the design note for our designs repo where we are meant to document this type of functionality um, because it sort of feeds into. I mean, this is where we try and have the main discussion about. Oops, hold on. don't do that. Do that. How do I hide the sidebar? No, there we are. Um, yeah, this is where we try and at least get written down these design notes, even for if it's for our future selves or as we're trying to discuss and review and get the shape of these things right. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to find, because I'm sure there's something in here about plugin settings. Yeah, okay, let's just add in a bit of a few words here about plugin resources. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of me sort of 
trying to detect, dictate and type to keep it interesting. But um, what are we going to say? We're going to say um, plugins may want to provide additional uh, resources to to the editor, such as extra JS. CS or images. It's a, um, to remove the need for them to create HP endpoints, um, we will introduce a new way for both plugins and nodes to register or to provide such content. In the same manner as icons and examples, if there is a directory called resources at the root of the package tree, um, the runtime will automatically expose that directory under the path uh, resources module name path to resource um, for example if a plugin has the file structure no, I, have I got an example file structure in here? To save me doing the ASCII art tree, I don't think so. I thought I did. Um, so we're going to have uh, package.json plugin.js Go on then, have a plugin.html. Yeah, so this is, I'm pleased with this. This is something that we've long talked about, which is to have make it easier to um, for nodes to provide content um, like this. So we can have script.js, let's have a CSS directory. Something like that. Um, so, okay, if a plugin called test plugin module has the file structure blah, the files, the resource files will be accessible via the paths resources test plugin module script.js and resources test plugin module CSS oh, CSS style.css cool cool right let's let's set some records straight so we're going to go into the designs repo I'm going to add resources directory to plugin design. So this is updating the design note, or at least the, the pull request for this for the plugin design note. So we make sure the documentation or the architectural documentation is up to date, relatively speaking. Um, then, yeah, just going to flick through, make sure I've not left any, didn't leave any console.logs in any of this code, did I? Um, don't think I did. Actually, what I do need to do, get the file listing back up before I commit this, is I just need to do the um, API documentation. Oh, and there's more I should do, but this is kind of what I am going to do. Um, 
Yeah, so here's get module resource. This is in the runtime API docs. So this we actually use this to generate documentation that we publish. So um, also may not document lots and lots. This is what we are documenting. So we want module and path. And this is gets a resource from a module. Something like that. Um, I'll use path uh, path of the resource, and then the resource file as a buffer or null if not found. Good, good. Member of yeah, so that suitably describes that API, and then. I bet in here, no, somewhere around here. That one, that one, that one. Is it in this one? Yeah, so in fact, I've got quite a few bits of documentation to write for the plugin stuff. So I'm, uh, um, Let's not make it worse than it is. Let's let's at least get this one this one new one. So uh, gets the full path to a modules resource file. So the arguments to registry to get module resource is a module and resource path. Now. I've made it an async function, but in fact, it doesn't strictly do any async work. So I'm going to not have it be asynchronous. So I do just need to work back up because this is no longer asynchronous. So take off the await word. Yeah, we should just sanity check that that still works. Um, yeah, we'll just whilst we wait for that, um, module path, name of the module providing the resource file, the relative path of the resource file, return the full path to the resource file. Cool, cool. That's, that's that, that's that, that's that. Right. There's no red running. Let's just check. We can still load. Yes, that still loads. And if we get that 404, can't be found. And if we get the module right, but say empty dir, that don't work. Now, if I do that, empty dir dot dot script dot js, that does work. So it does let you do relative as long as it stays within test plugin, no, it stays within the module. Although, how much that is on our side or whether the browser resolves the dot dots <laughs> before it sends the request. I'm not sure. Given the browser changes the URL, I'm, I think that's actually Chrome doing that rather than any of our code, but there we are. All right, um, I'm gonna, that's all good. It's all working. Let's just review what we've done. So that's the resources um, URL handler with its gorpy uh, um, regex. And, 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 yeah, no, this is all, this, I mean, I've been through this enough times this afternoon. I'm happy with this. I'm aware I've not written any tests, but at five past nine, I'm not going to write tests for this right now. I'll get that coverage done tomorrow but um, yeah this is good enough to get let's get this committed um, no that's a, let's try again um, allow module to provide resources 
and automatically expose them. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, let's push that up and because I'm working on a branch which doesn't exist, I can push that up and click the link. And oh, it's big. Let's shrink that down. And we want to pull request against dev because that's where new code goes. That's what 1.3 is. Um, and then let's just put a bit of a blurb in here. New feature. Um, if a plugin or node module has a top level directory called resources, the runtime will now automatically expose it over the HTTP admin root handler. That's an, an important point, actually. These resources only get exposed over admin, not the sort of runtime node side of things. So um, that that might be something that needs to be refined if, if in the future a node or a plugin wants to expose HTTP resources to the run to the node side of the world rather than the admin side of the world. If if you understand the difference between those two, but that's that's okay for now. Um, root handler. Uh, this um, using the path resources name of module path to resource. This removes the need for the plugin node or node to manually if I can type manually set up root handlers to do the same. Cool cool. I forget all that. Create pull request. And we are done for the evening. Yeah, that's all we're going to do tonight. Um, yeah. So 1.3 is on its way. You know, functionally, it is 99.9% .9 there. Oh, I will say, for, for if you followed, if you were here last week, um, did I? Yeah, I haven't merged it yet, actually. But um, I... I spent a bit more time getting the cursor key navigation around the workspace and I'm still not 100% happy with it. So I've I've rolled back some of the changes you saw us work on last week. Um, I have, I have, um, yeah, I've, I've changed it. So the cursor keys just follow through the selection in the connected nodes in a flow. Um, I wasn't happy enough with the keyboard navigation in general, and I think it needs more focus than I kind of want to give it right this second. So it's it's perhaps a smaller change than the bigger change or the, the bigger enhancement I was looking at. Um, so, yeah, given, given there's absolutely no keyboard traversal of the flows today, um, then I don't feel the need to try and solve it all in one go. But certainly there's there's little bits there. Being able to d dive straight into a subflow is certainly much easier now using the control key and that's all nice. And, and being able to go back and forward to back to where you were is nicer, but there's still, again, more to do. I think if you jump between locations in one flow, so you click on a debug message and it jumps you to the node, um, it would be nice to be able to track the jumps in location within the workspace. Um, that's a bit tricky at the moment. Just who owns the different bits of information is a bit too far apart to be able to track that coherently. But um, yeah, that's something else I'll look at before we do the 1.3 release with this in. But anyway, there we go. That's me for tonight. Um, uh, thanks for joining, as ever. Thanks for watching if you've watched this far. Um, yeah, so, uh, I'll be back next week. I've got... Um, got some news to share tomorrow and um i've got some time off work 
for the next couple of weeks. I suspect I'll still be spending some time on Node Red. So I currently plan to still stream next Monday, um, but I will I will let people know and I'll update the um, agenda on Twitch if yeah the the schedule on Twitch if I uh, change plans based on being on holiday. But the kids are in school. I've just using up holiday before I lose it. So um, yeah, not going anywhere. Cool. Well, thanks for joining. If you've watched this far, well done. Um, if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, um, leave a comment. Let us know if there's any if there's any areas of Node Red you'd like to see more of. Need to spend some more time in. If there's a particular feature on the backlog you'd be interested in seeing me tackle or think I could tackle in a live stream, maybe over a series of them, just let me know. Um, you know, I'm doing this as much for you guys as I do it for myself. Um, it's it's helpful for me to talk through these features as I'm working on them. It helps me rationalize what's what I'm doing. It helps me often get to a better result just by talking about it for an hour each week. So um, I'll be here. Do join if you are interested. Otherwise, have a good week and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>